some of the basic propaganda techniques that we need to become familiar with because these are going to be used uh, a lot. Name calling is a, is a classic one. You're a terrorist. Um, you know, you're a, uh, an internet civil libertarian. There's one that probably wants to use. Oh, really? I don't even know what that means, but it sounds dirty somehow. Um, and there's this, this suggestion that you're uh, into uh, child pornography. Um, yeah. So the use of names and, and, and epithets, you know, ad hominem epithets is a classic thing. And we need to, to know that this stuff is coming and not... I mean, I, would, I hope we don't have to buy into this, but we need to know that this is the sort of campaign that we're, we're fighting. The, the sort of bandwagon technique where you get everyone on the back, you think this, this, this correlates with this. So if you agree with the clean feed, then you're not a child pornographer. If you, if you want that, if you want that, then you are a child pornographer. It makes these simple associations in people's minds. And, they want, and people want to be on the winning side too. There's this, this fundamental thing in human psychology that you want to be on the winning side. This is something that we can tap into. If we can create, I call it Operation Shitstorm when I'm talking to friends, if we can create such a huge uh, uh, campaign out there that smothers the interwebs with our messaging, and it's messaging that's clear and concise and catchy, um, people will want to get on the bad wagon. Um, glittering generalities is another typical propaganda uh, technique that is being used in this against us. Um, these are these generalities, uh, again, as, as, uh, associating people who want to clean feed with child pornography or porn rape, or if, if you want that, then you want this. And these are, these are classic techniques that we need to work against. Um, Pro-rape is another I was listening to Triple Z um, on the weekend and heard Conroy being interviewed on Triple Z. And the interviewer, um, I, I don't know who it was, and I apologies if you're in the room, but um, you know, Conroy was just coming out with all of this stuff and it wasn't getting attacked at its root. It was, a, it was a discussion that Conroy had complete control of because he's very, very good at this stuff. Mm. Um, you know, card stacking is something that, that we need to be aware of as well. Card stacking is basically a technique where you make sure that the, the terms of the conversation are, are your terms. So it's going to be very difficult for me to walk into Conroy's office and get an interview with him. Um, they're, they're going to work with people that I think are, are friendly, people that they can get their way with, people that will ask them the right questions and, and allow them to give the, the preset answers. And if we're, going to, if we're going to be successful, we need to figure out ways to tackle all of this stuff. Um, plain folk sticks, I think something the Howard government did very well, you know, it's a, even though a lot of these, you know, uh, uh, politicians are lawyers and accountants and wealthy individually, uh, they like to associate themselves with the average person, the common man, you know, the hard-working Aussie. Again, this is going to be used again. Anyone who fights this is going to be classified as uh, a bit of a, a pervert. And I know some of you are perverts, but, you know, <laughs> that shouldn't stop us. Let me move on. Um, what we need, I think, is constant content. I think letter writing and postcards and sending coal is, uh, is great. Uh, well, it's not supposed to be digging up coal anymore, though, in my opinion. No, it's, it's very... Just don't burn it. Yeah, it's okay. Oh, it's okay if we dig it up. <laughs> Just don't burn it. Thanks, thanks Ian. Um, we, I think we need constant content. I mean, if, 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 if we look at what our advantages are as a group, we understand this interweb thing. We, we're supposed to, anyway, better than everyone else. We, we're the early adopters. We're the people that spend all of our days letting our brains rot by sitting on Twitter and Facebook. We, we need to take control of this stuff and actually use it, as well as the stuff that Nick was rightfully talking about, letter writing, campaigns, and sitting down with the ministers and, and, and the people in opposition as well. Constant content. Um, and, you know, uh, videos. I want to see... I want to see everybody in every electorate in Australia, uh, one representative from our big community, sign up in every electorate to get in their local uh, MP's face and the person in opposition with a video camera and producing content for YouTube, asking mm -hmm. them three, four, five questions every yeah. day, every week. We've got three months to pull this shit together. This, you know, probably double dissolution is going to be an election sometime early next year, March, let's say. Uh, you know, we, we've got three months to absolutely saturate the interwebs with content. Uh, cartoons, comics. Uh, we've got a lot of creative people in the space that, that can paint, that can draw. Uh, I was talking to Ben Templesmith on Twitter today. Um, I don't know if you know Ben, but he's an Aussie who now lives in the US, but uh, he's a world famous comic book artist, graphic novelist, did the um, 30 Days of Night series. Uh, he was the artist behind that, did Fell with Warren Ellis. Um, this guy's had his books turned into films, he's, he's world class and he's like, yeah, anything I can do to create content to get the message out, let me know. Mm -hmm. We need to tap into this network that we have of really, really 
seriously creative people and, and get them working for us. What plus podcast interviews, you know, we need to get out there and start producing content uh, and, and we need the smartest people, the lawyers, the, the people with political experience who really understand how to uh, uh, frame and phrase the issues correctly to educate the rest of us. I mean, if I go out with a video camera or a microphone, I don't know what questions I'm supposed to ask. I'm sure most of you don't either. We need to get our best minds who can put together that stuff to work with the people who know to shoot a, you know, a video, know how to make a podcast, to, 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 to really come together as a talent pool and leverage the best of what we can all bring to the table. You know, we're looking for virality, we're looking for stuff that is catchy enough that, you know, a lot of people will watch it. You know, not everything that we produce is going to be viral, but if we can get two, we can get three things that end up on Kerry Ann Kennelly or, um, I'm saying that word, the Today Show. Uh, you know, there's a lot of journalists I know who uh, uh, want to support this. If we can get stuff that they can pick up and run with. We can, we can take this from 10, 20, 30,000 people to, to a million, to two million, to three million and start to get these messages out there. Um, so that, I guess that's the basic message that, that I want to leave you with, is we need to leverage the talent pool. I know there's a few people like uh, Trib that are setting up uh, uh, registers uh, where people can sign up and say, listen, I, I, I have a skill in X, I really want to contribute, we're going to try and bring all of those people together and leverage the best minds that we have in a way that we can just produce uh, an ongoing barrage of on-message content over the next three months and tapping into all of those different um, uh, uh, platforms. You know, uh, when Inglourious Bastards came out uh, earlier in the year, you, you know, you heard a lot of people say, well, this, this is the film that Twitter made. Twitter made this film successful. There's this huge buzz, word of mouth. The same thing sort of happening with Avatar. We've seen this happen over the last couple of years where Twitter, blogging, social media, we've been able to, you know, we can plug Smith's Crisps uh, successfully and we can plug, you know, uh, movies and records and that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, I don't think we've had the confidence yet to really sell ideas, to really take our message effectively into the political spectrum. But I think if we can, if we can get out there and sell movies and products and uh, uh, stuff, consumer stuff that we don't really need. We should be able to figure out how to apply the, those same techniques to, to selling the idea. And the, and the idea, of course, in this case is keep your hands off our internet. Huh? Um, that's me. Thanks.